Like it. Let's go. There they go. And Gunny Walker again. What? That's it? It's over? Oh, yeah, I forgot. This is oh. And Gunny Walker again. What? That's it? It's over? Oh, yeah, I forgot. This is really short. Come on, Rand. Now I'm going to be up all week. Okay, relax. We'll right find you a rave to go to after this. All right, but I want glow sticks. I've got them. A man who won during his time four wrist wrestling championships and a man who in 19... Held his breath for 14 days straight. Won the Mr. America title. Just recently, Al, uh, I uh, broke a world's record. I broke Jacqueline's world's record of handstand dips, Okay, Jimmy. Which All right. He did 35, no need to talk so loud. That's about, what microphones uh, are there for. Ago, I did... 51 at the age of 52, which I'm kind of proud of handstand. Tip. I'd say you're more than proud of that, Jimmy. Try a few, would, you? Want me to, would you like me to try a couple out there? No, that's all right. It's getting late. Yeah, start another match. No, we can pretty much imagine what it's going to look like. Handstand dips. World record holder. Come on, you can do it. All right. Let's count along. Let's one. Two. Dear everybody. Eight. Three. B, Four, C, five, stop. Six, seven. I feel like I'm watching someone's uncle do the horror at a wedding. You know he's going to pull something. He's not even doing full ones anymore. This is ridiculous. There is no way I give him 37. I give him 24 at best. Next year, I'm going to break the world's record on you, 53. Sure you are, just like you did today. All right, now it's time for the championship match, the heavyweight finals, an epic game of chess between two magnificently conditioned athletes. After the semifinals were over, we visited with Hood. What do you think your chances are against the big man from Georgia? Well, I like to think he's going to lose. What, what do you think really that? think? <laughs> I don't know. He's an awful For the first time in George's life, he wishes he were fatter. How much do you weigh, big boy? It's supposed to weigh a little over 400. 400 pounds? I can't wait. Man, right. I can't believe it. You're going to break the scale. Uh, maybe not. Okay, oh, sure you want to taunt this guy with fat jokes? He's going to lose. See what Hopefully. happens. It's like Hood's the Washington Generals and Dean's the Globetrotters. We know who's going to win before it starts, but it's still fun to watch. Match, that mountain of a man from Georgia, Cleve Dean, whose ring size is 19, set to face Hood again. Dean's Chamber of Commerce in his hometown donating $1,000. Wow, he's so big he's got his own Chamber of Commerce. One step away from the championship. Good start by Dean and a victory for Cleve Dean. The new heavyweight champion. It took a while when the race when it got started. When it got started the second time, did you feel you had him? Man, I know I had my nose. Ladder team, right here. Three national champions come, got two world championships, and a runner-up. They all across some grit, thought they. What did Viers just say? Not even Viers knows what Viers just said. Dear ABC, do you believe in resignations? Yes. Stop. True story. Cleve Dean was supposed to be Sylvester Stallone's final opponent in the movie Over the Top. But the producers replaced him at the last minute, saying it would be too unrealistic to have Stallone beat him. Oh, okay. So it's not believable that Stallone could beat Dean in an arm wrestling match, but it is believable that Stallone could win custody of his son just by winning an arm wrestling match. And that his son could learn to drive a tractor trailer in five minutes. Oh, hmm, makes sense. All right, we'll be back with the final event in our wide world potpourri. And I gotta tell you, this will blow your mind, so stay with us. Okay, those were two pretty wild events we just saw, but compared to this third event, they're about to look like Lee Trevino's putting challenge. In fact, we're required to say this before we show you our final segment. Those of you with asthma, diabetes, or heart problems, those of you who are pregnant or are having unprotected sex, you might want to avert your eyes. And with that, we give you ice boat racing. White lake, white sails, white sky. What color do you think the graphics should be? Buddy Melgus in the Mickey Finn was in first place. 
Bill Matson of Madison, Wisconsin, in the Honey Bucket was. Hey, that's second. Honey Bucket and Five to you, punk. Wayne, Illinois, was third in the hot stuff, and uh, the A boats now are getting into position for our next race. And perhaps here's one of our champions of the future. Uh, here's Danny Beerman. That's Danny Beerman. He's thin as a rail. Lake, Wisconsin, who's made this ice boat all by himself. I'm gonna and, bet uh, Danny has no friends. Ice skates for runners on this one. And probably uh, will be one of our future champions in one of these big boats. And he's certainly got a yeah. large contingent of fans out here watching him today. And there he goes, sailing his way into therapy. Oh, ton and a half. And they're going to be underway. We've got uh, light variable wind. But as soon as these big Light variable wind? Since when is an ice storm light? How fast they can go. I'm glad the boats have distinguishing marks. It should be easy to tell who's who. Well, don't worry. If you lose track, the white graphics will come up and straighten everything out. Waiting for these big fellows to move out across this course. Why the are these guys going in that direction? Uh, guys, it's the other way. It's the other way. They can't hear you through the light variable wind. Deuce is moving right away from the Flying Dutchman. She's got a very high rig, and she's catching... I hope the white sail wins. Going right by the Dutchman. Notice that strapping on there. The Deuce had its backbone broken. Wait. That's the reason you Where? see some of the windings what? on the ribbing. What's happening? I don't know. Before, uh, Where are the other five races? boats? I don't know. What's he saying? I don't know. Where exactly are they on the lake? I don't know. Is there a course they have to follow? I don't know. How do you win this thing? I don't know. Come on, melt. Come on, melt. This is the lamest IMAX movie ever. Onto the lake and onto the course. The ball is underway, getting a nice burst. And here okay, are those people's cars parked right on the ice? I mean, can you imagine that happening in any other sport? Okay, why don't you just park anywhere to the right side of the third baseline and, oh, leave the keys. Followed by the Fritz, who is now in second place, and Ferdinand, here she comes, making a nice turn there, going around in third place. Okay. Don't you hate it when you go to do a little pickup ice boat sailing and the whole lake is just filled up with the race and you got to do that whole who's got next and then, you know, you need one and you got to go skins and you have to guard that really tall boat who was ice boat racing in college. I mean, I'm sure it was like D3, but still, it's like he's better than anyone you ice boat raced against in high school and then he's calling all that cheap stuff like over and back. I haven't seen this much white since the Celtics parade in 84. Even the people who cared enough to go out there don't even know what the hell's going on. I can't take it anymore. Turn it off. Well, that's going to do it for our show today. We saw a little cliff diving, a little wrist wrestling, and some ice boat racing. Three events that on the surface appear to be completely unrelated. However, we believe these three events do have a common element. They each featured someone tangential to the action of the competition who promised amazing things, but in the end, completely disappointed everyone. There was Ann Peterson, who totally Petersoned out. There was Jimmy Payne with his 37 handstand dips. And who could forget Danny Bierman, whose bid to become the Michelle Wee of ice boat racing proved to be a colossal waste of time for everyone involved. And that is why they are in a three-way tie for our least valuable player, Cheapy. Now, my least valuable play is this. Really? I thought that was a great play. All right, here's mine. Okay, heads. Barney has called heads, it is tails. Well, that's it for our wide world goulash. We'll see you next week on Cheap Seats. Take care of yourselves, people. And remember, wherever you go, whatever you do, no neck. Sunday.